Hi, everyone, and thank you for being with us. So today I'm at Memret uh, headquarters in Germany to give you a presentation on the webinar and uh, to give you a presentation, sorry, on the compress compressor and Peltier technologies. So this is the first time that Mermaid is organizing um, a webinar with one of its distributors. So we are very happy to be able to give you this presentation for the Belgian market. Um, LabConsult and Mermaid have been part partners for many, many years. Before the partner was the company named Vortelabo, but since 2020, Vortelabo and LabConsult have merged together to form one single entity. So, um, yeah, we can say that we have been partners for many years. In a few words, LabConsult is a um, reagents, uh, is a distributor for laboratory reagents and consumables, and of course, uh, laboratory equipment. So don't hesitate to share with us all your requests. We will be happy to help. And of course, don't hesitate to visit our website, www.labconsult.be. Um, so on my left, there is Andreas, and on my right, there is Gerard, who are both sales and technical specialists at Memerts. So today's topic will be the presentation of both Peltier and compressor technologies. So of course, each customer might have different application and might have different needs, but we are here to provide you with valuable insight about all the advantages of both technologies and also to give you the key factors to help you with the choice of either going for the Peltier technology or for the compressor technology. Uh, one last important uh, feature is the chat. So on your right on, on your screen, on the right part, you have the chat window. Don't hesitate uh, to share with us your question. We will be uh, trying to answer to them as fast as we can, either during the presentation or later via email. Thank you, Mathieu. Also, I'm going to take over with the PowerPoint pre presentation. Um, later on, we will have a yeah, short Q&A session where we will ask some, yeah, un answer some frequently asked questions. Um, then we will continue with a live presentation of our devices that you already saw in the back of us. Um, and then we also have a small experiment um, to, show, to show you the functionality um, of the Peltier elements. So let's start. So today, uh, difference between the two technologies of the Peltier and compressor technology. Um, also, what are the advantages and disadvantages of both technologies? And what is the yeah, ideal cooling uh, unit for your um, laboratory applications? And what are the deciding factors um, to consider? The Peltier effect that was discovered by Jean Peltier um, in France um, in 1834. Um, and he discovered that Peltier effect based on the Seebeck effect. Um, and the working principle is in an electric circuit, a temperature difference is created at the contact points of two different conducting materials. And the one side becomes cold and is transferring the heat to the other side, which is getting hot. Um, and the commercial success of these yeah, Peltier elements and, and uh, chips um, started when the, uh, with the development of the semiconductors because their resistance decreases with the increase of the temperature of um, the semiconductors. Um, on the right hand side, you can see a picture of such an, an schema and drawing of a Peltier chip and all their parts. Um, and the Peltier element is working like a heat pump. So it's uh, pumping the energy from the cold side to the hot side. Um, and the waste heat that is expelled on the hot side, is that's the sum of the heat of the electric consumption of the Peltier chip itself and also of the um, cooling capacity from the cold side. And by reversing the polarity um, of the yeah, power, um, the Peltier effect can be reversed. So the hot side, uh, the cold side becomes the hot side and the cold side becomes the hot side. So it's switching vice versa um, based on the um, direct current um, flow. Um, the cold side of the Peltier element extracts from the environment and releases it to the other side. And please remember these small Peltier chips, they are integrated in the Peltier uh, modules we can see later on. Um, and the actual cooling capacity is reduced by uh, due to the lost heat um, and also due to the heat reflux to the cold side. 
um, in the heat reflux. That's proportional to the thermal conductivity of the material and the temperature difference, of course, um, that you can see in the diagram on the right side. And the Palti chips I mentioned before, they are integrated in these Palti modules, which you can see um, in that picture. So this is a picture of the Palti modules um, we are using in our latest uh, models, HPP Echo and IPP Echo. Um, and the waste heat, um, which is created, must be removed as efficient as possible um, to ensure the best energy consumption and, of course, um, yeah, reduce yeah, or Im improve the um, temperature stability inside the chamber um, and have the best possible um, environment for your samples. And this is also done with yeah, demand-controlled fans on the inside and outside. These fans are yeah, turn up, speed up, and slow down based on yeah, the temperature difference um, from the environment inside the chamber and the set point you set on, your, on the controller. Um, what objectives we achieve with our Palti modules is, of course, we avoid the overheating of the very small uh, Palti chips by getting rid of the waste energy to the environment and also, we, of course, optimize the efficiency to have the lowest energy consumption as possible um, and also enable the greatest temperature difference between the cold side and the hot side. Um, so the, we are using the Palti modules for heating and cooling in our incubators and climate chambers. Um, and there is no air exchange from the inside and to the environment. So um, it's, as soon as you close the door, it's completely sealed um, to ensure that there is no air exchange to reduce the energy consumption because no additional air has to be heated up or cooled down. And of course, also improving the temperature stability inside the chamber. Um, if there would occur any condensation during the cooling process, uh, this condensation would occur on the Palti modules itself, um, and then the condensation will be guided outside of the chamber to avoid any contamination inside the chamber. Um, our HPP Echo and IPP Echo appliances um, have been launched in the beginning of 2021, and since then we, we have the uh, very energy efficient um, operating uh, or great temperature range from zero degrees up to 70 degrees. Uh, this high efficiency can also be seen in that diagram you can see here. Um, we will see different temperature and climatic points um, from the ICH Q1A. Um, and in gray, you can see the energy consumption of a yeah, compressor device. In red, you can see the energy consumption of our old um, devices. And in green, you can see that we took a big step forward in our R&D um, and achieving a very good energy consumption by reducing um, yeah, the energy that is used for running for 12 months in a row um, by far. So what are the advantages of the Palti technology? It's a very yeah, compact design, so it's a very small form factor. Um, there are no moving parts, no refrigerant. Um, therefore, it's also almost vibration free. Um, and it's very low noise. So it's very good uh, if you're working very close to the device, uh, taking your notes in the laboratory, et cetera. Um, it's very, yeah, the best choice to have a policy driven device instead of a compressor device. Um, also the lack of a refrigerant um, is much more climate friendly because there is no, yeah, there can be no leakage as there is no cooling liquid. Um, and there's also no dedicated um, heat source required because we can switch uh, the polarity of the direct current um, to and have only one device that can be used for cooling and heating. Also, we can run temperature cycles um, with that one uh, Palti chip, um, and these Palti chips react immediately to any changes in the temperature inside the device. So if there's a temperature drop, for example, after opening um, the door, that temperature will, will, will recover as soon as possible um, because they re react immediately. What we will see also in the experiment later on. So let's switch to the counterparts, the compressor. Um, the compressor is also used in our um, incubators and climate chambers. Um, and you can see in the right diagram what's the basic functionality of this um, refrigerant machine. On the top, you can see the compressor. There, the um, yeah, the cooling liquid is compressed, and during the compression, um, the cooling liquid will increase the temperature. 
Um, so therefore, in the condenser, we will get rid of the yeah, additional heat to the environment. Um, and then the cool down cooling liquid is put, is put through a throttle element um, where the pressure is reduced again. Um, and due to the evaporating process of the cooling liquid, the cooling liquid will get much more colder and can therefore consume energy from inside. Um, and inside in that case is the chamber um, of the um, climate chamber or incubator. Um, this heat is then collected by um, in the evaporator and will get rid of we will get rid of that additional heat um, in the con uh, liquefier. But we will also see later on in the live demonstration. Um, so with our um, compressor driven devices, incubators, and climate chambers, we have a yeah, closed air jacket system. So we are blowing air around the chamber of our um, yeah, climate chambers, um, and we cool and heat up that temp uh, the air around. We are blowing around the chamber to ensure um, that all, all four sides, so left, bottom, right, and top side, are cool or heated equally. So there are no cold spots or hot, hot spots to ensure that we'll, there will be no condensation inside the chamber. Um, we have also includes a defrosting, uh, defrosting cycles to ensure that there will be no icing up of the air jacket. And the air jacket will then transfer the energy to all four sides, which then transfer the heat to the inner chamber. In the right, on the right side, you can see the picture, um, which is showing, okay, where is, uh, how does the heating process look like? So on the top, we have above the chamber, we have a ring heater, which is creating the heat. And then the air is blown all around um, the chamber in that air jacket, um, and then is transferred to the inner chamber. By switching to the cooling, um, there's an evaporator on the right side, which is creating the cold, and the cold is then, yeah, reducing the temperature of the air jacket, and the air jacket is then cooling down all four sides of the climate chamber. So what are the advantages of the compressor technology? Um, you can have a way higher energy, uh, heat compensation. Um, so this is a perfect device um, yeah, for having like, yeah, and shaker inside, lamps inside, which expel heat to the inner chamber, which we need to get rid of. Um, and also, if you open frequently the door, um, this device is very well designed to, to compensate all that additional yeah, energy that is brought inside uh, the chamber. So what are the uh, deciding factors? Um, yeah, either quality technology or compressor technology. Um, it's on the one hand, of course, the temperature, homogeneity, and consens consistency. Um, also, the heating and recovery time. And also, as mentioned already before, the um, low noise is very yeah in deciding factor so you can compare like the peltry element or the peltry driven is for running stable temperature and climate points for a very long period of time for example icq one a guideline um, and our compressor devices are yeah working hard working machines um, which can compensate a lot of heat um, and therefore also can be a little bit louder so if you're working very close to the device please um, check if it's possible to consider um, and pelletier driven device. Also in, in important is to consider the ambient temperature um, and what temperature range you have to um, yeah, run with your device. So if you have to go sub-zero, um, then a compressor device is, is, yeah, is the best choice because the pelletier models have a temperature range from zero degrees up to 70 degrees Celsius. Also regarding the service, uh, maintenance, and also environmental factors because um, the pelletier driven device have no cooling liquid that has to be maintained in the cooling machine. Um, and also if there's no cooling liquid, there can be no leakage of the cooling liquid. Okay, so now we will continue with um, a short Q&A answering some yeah, questions, uh, frequently asked questions from our customers. Um, and then we will have a live demonstration and of course the experiment I mentioned to you. Hi, Drew. Hi, uh, So I've gathered uh, some questions that my customer uh, asked me. Uh, so first it will be about the climate chambers and then about the compressors. Okay. The incubators, sorry. Um, so for climate chambers, the first question is about lighting. So the question is, is it possible to have UV light inside? 
and is it possible to control the intensity of the light? Okay, uh, light for mobile devices are, uh, are an accessory. Um, if you we need UV lights. It's a compression technology climate chamber. It is called ICHL. And you, we could have a box with uh, white, white, white color light and UV light. Uh, this light work on or off. It's not possible to modulate the intensity. Next question, please, Matthew. So um, about the humidity and condensation, I had a customer that had to go uh, from 10% relative humidity until 70% relative humidity. So the question was, how do I make sure to avoid any condensation inside the chamber? Uh, in fact, when, when we use uh, climate chambers uh, for memory devices, our climate chamber are constant climate chamber. This vocabulary is really important. What does it mean? It means that we use our climate chamber for aging tests, for stability, stability tests. Generally, generally, the sample do not generate humidity. And uh, the, with our devices, we do the regulation of humidity with the cold point. This cold point is assumed by uh, the painted blocks, uh, cooled very, very, very low, and it's enough to, to, to control the humidity. But if you use sample like a plant growing or something like that, we could introduce uncontrolled humidity inside the chambers. And to, 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 to remove this uh, ex excedent of humidity, we use flush dry gas air and we have an, a specific option called C9 and we do we, f we just flush a gas inside the inside the chamber and and the, and the value of the humidity uh, go back to the to the, the good value uh, really really quickly thank you uh, next question would be um, so about noise and vibration uh, a customer had samples that were really sensible to noise and vibration. So he was just asking me, do you have any recommendation for that? Yeah. If, um, for example, uh, when you do growing zebra fish, we do not need a vibration or a, or a noisy instrument. And the best technology is a Peltier incubator or, or Peltier climate chambers. If you use a, Compressor technology, we introduce a lot of noise and some vibration. Uh, so the next question will be about the incubators. Uh, so I had a customer that were uh, really interesting uh, by the Peltier incubator because of the energy saving. Uh, but at the same time, he needed to, to open the door quite fr frequently. And so um, there was different temperatures to set. So um in this sense normally when it's um when it's um different temperatures and what we call dynamic uh, temperatures fluctuation it would be more the compressor technology but for the energy saving the peltier technology um if you would like to to reach uh, quickly the temperature for the, the good value in fact you could we could use um, Peltier technology or compressor technology. It's not, it's not a problem. In fact, it depends on the size of your sample. Uh, generally, in our technical data sheet, you have the, the, the time to, the, the removing time to, to reach the, the uh, your, 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 your value. Uh, it, for me, it's depending on the size and the mass of your sample. Okay. Um, regarding temperature homogeneity, is there a better uh, incubator, either Peltier or compressor? Oh. Uh, for this question, in the past, um, compressor technology is really better than, than Peltier. But uh, two years ago, Mehmet introduced our new Peltier Eco technology. And this new generation of Peltier technology 
are really equivalent as the uh, as the compression. Sometimes it's it's better than the compression. Okay, and the last question was about the maintenance. Uh, so, uh, what is the specific maintenance and spare parts you need to uh, take care for each technology? Generally, for this kind of uh, instrument, uh, we need to, to 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 clean the filter because, for example, in in the compressor you have a filter, and if you have a lot of dust, the instrument could increase their their working temperature, and you reach the security temperature, and the machine stop. And it, it's equivalent for the Peltier technology. There is not a lot of uh, maintenance. Uh, Okay, perfect. Do we have uh, any question on the chat? No question. Not for the moment. So we will introduce the our accessory. Uh, we will present you the first thing. We are always talking about Peltier technology. Here is the size of uh, Peltier units, and inside a block of Peltier technology, we have many units inside and this one is a dehumidification block that we have in climate chambers we have this one another peltier blocks this one is the heating and cooling element peltier we have the internal face and the external face its face has its own fan to, to remove the, the heating. All PT elements, for example, are in, inside this HPP 410 ECO. In this instrument, we have two block PT, one, two, and we, we have two dehumidification elements inside. The next big accessory is our um, compressor system. This compressor system, you have the compressor. It's, it's a kind of motor for the liquid uh, refrigerant. And we send it to the condenser. And the, the liquid goes to the, uh, to the evaporator. And these big uh, surfaces are inside the, the chamber and the, uh, the heat exchanging is done by this evaporator and we have this uh, accessory this process of accessory, accessory inside this icp incubator you have the compressor in the lower parts we have a motor fan in the uh, double envelope, and you have another fan inside the, the, the oven. And the next uh, experiment, please, Matthew, could you help me? Yes. We, we, will, we would like to show you how the Peltier units uh, are working very, very fast. We have just a liquid. And we try to simulate a freezing and to show you that it freezes very, very quickly. We insert the plastic tube. Here, just less than less less than twenty seconds. The the liquid is freezing, and now we just change the polarity of the system. And we are able to heat again. Ah, sorry, <laughs> it's made very fast. <laughs> I think. I hope you, you you understand the experiment. 
we could do a short resume of uh, our technology. Uh, in fact, there is no bad technology. Peltier is working very well. It's depend of your application. If you are working more or less between five degree till 50 degree, five zero, Peltier technology is really a good instrument. And if you are working around uh, 20 degree, it is the best choice because you, the, the energy consumption is really, really low. But if you are working around zero degree, minus 10, minus 20, yes, compressor is the best technology. It's depend on your application. And uh, we are really, really proud to do the presentation for you. Mathieu, do you have something to say to you? Thank you, Stephen, from Rachel. Well, uh, we hope that this webinar was helpful to you and that we have provided uh, good information. And don't hesitate to contact us. If you have any question, we are always here to help, happy to help. So don't hesitate. Also, thank you very much from my thank side you, for joining our webinar. Um, also, you can download um, yeah, a white paper and additional documents right now um, on the side or on the bottom of the webinar. Um, and also, you can watch the recording. If you missed the beginning, um, you will see the recording via, web, uh, via, via link per email. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to contact Mathieu uh, and Lab Consult. They will answer all your questions.